have a few things that we get ready to do here. We have a, a classroom down the hallway, and um, the classes that we intend to teach here is going to be um, GED, um, financial literacy, um, computer literacy, um, job preparedness, etiquette, anger management. Those are the things you'll be able to come here and get addressed. Now, clearly Switch Lanes is a nonprofit organization, right? So we don't have money, you know, we're doing our first fundraiser, which is coming up um, October 19th, which is going to be our gala titled Breaking the Cycle of Recidivism, you know, recidivism being that cycle of people going back and forth to prison. And um, we're going to be giving awards to individuals who have broken that cycle by simply staying home and not going back to prison, as well as the individuals who contributed to people staying home and not going back to prison. Those classrooms, um, we didn't have any money, so therefore we had people that were willing to donate to Switch Lanes. Waukegan School District is one of the partners that we have, and Superintendent Teresa Placencia, um, she worked out something to where she actually donated us um, 15 um, computers for our classroom. We wouldn't have really been able to get started with them unless she was willing to do that. Before her, the Boys and Girls Club here, they donated some computers to us. Those computers do work, so we're going to pass it forward. So we're going to take those computers that were donated to us by the Boys and Girls Club and we're going to pass them on to another nonprofit organization to keep the partnerships alive. And I think that's what we need to start doing. One nonprofit is no different than the next. We're all supposed to be trying to help the community. That said, one street organization is no different than the next. They all want what's best for their children, their families, and whatever else. So to me, that blueprint is universal. So whether we're talking about nonprofit organizations, churches, political groups, or street organizations, they're all people, they all bleed the same, they all want the same for their families and friends. So I think if we can use that to emulate and replicate around the country, I think we're going to be much better for it. So that's what we're doing here at Switch Lanes. That's some of what we're doing here at Switch Lanes. we got a lot of work to do. We want somebody to come in and say, okay, well, what is Switch Lanes doing? Well, even if I never open my mouth, I want you to go look at the paperwork and see the data, see the people that we've helped. We're feeding thousands of families around here. We're clothing hundreds of families around here. We're taking many, many dozens of individuals and we're pushing them towards jobs. They weren't employed before they employed now as a result of what they came and got from Switch Lanes. We got many individuals that young girls don't even know how to sit with a dress on. Basic etiquette that hadn't been taught to them. So these are some of the things that people are able to come here and get from Switch Lanes. But I almost want to say bigger than any of that because virus is so strong, conflict resolution, being able to get through to these young dudes and make them understand that they need to do something different is not easy. It's complicated. It's tricky to use one of my favorite words, right? And we've got to have a certain skill set. You've got to have a certain credibility to be able to do it. You can replace me here, maybe, but it's going to be difficult to get that type of trust established with some of these young people. So that's a little bit of what we're doing here at Switch Lanes.